just going to remark on this before I go to the pool because I am not going to want to when I get back. But I'm just sort of going to outline today's job. Um, well, this week's job, really. So I have Intertwingler. Uh, CLI and configuration. That's the dynamic. That is, uh, so I have, I've finally gotten back to this stuff. I had a sparkle mishap. Basically the, uh, the thing was doing the sparkle processor when you gave it a like path star operator it would um spin out like it would give um it would like start calculating like the cartesian product of the entire graph and i had like thirty-five thousand statements in the graph which meant like over a billion comparisons um so that was bad um i still that's still not fixed so i'm going to have to just work around it for now it turns out if you give it something algebraically equivalent if you say like a uh, path and then like path uh, I think the path question and path plus or something like that uh, it is equivalent and it and it works so figure that out what else so I'm gonna do that I have, uh, the um, configuration loading so I've I've started stubbing out the command line interface for intertwingler I still need to do the actual like dynamic configuration loader, um, which is going to load the bulk of the configuration out of the graph. Now, so I'm just doing like the regular kind of schlep work of um, just like like this sort of bare bones config because it's still going to need like a static configuration in order to tell it where to look for the graph to get the dynamic configuration. But then. Uh, once I've got that, I'm just going to write like just static methods, like configure methods for every class in the thing. And that's going to go into the graph and pull out all the stuff from the intertwingler vocabulary. So that's cool. Although I will see how well I, I do with that uh, today because my girlfriend, who is a sound editor, she needs help with this thing called sound flow. And uh, so this is a funny thing about like I, th I wrote about this in my last newsletter about how we have these tools that are putatively automated but they require us to click on stuff and she spent the other day 10 minutes explaining to me this process that she has to do all by hand and this thing soundflow basically what it does is it bolts a javascript interpreter onto like just the UI, like the accessibility UI of a Mac app, in this case, Pro Tools. And they got like a couple shortcuts and methods and stuff like that. But like when you see these things running, it's like, as I wrote the other day, it's like a freaking poltergeist on meth controlling your computer because it's way too fast for a human, but it's way too slow for, for an automated, like a fully automated system. And so it's just kind of funny because like, like, these things, like the interventions that she needs, like I said, she, she spent a good solid 10 minutes explaining to me this process. And it takes her not quite 10 minutes to do it every time, but she's got to do this like a hundred times over. Yeah, so it took her longer to speak it out than it would be if she was just like silently doing it. So it would take her like, you know, still a few minutes, but uh, it would take, if you could script the entire thing, it would probably take like, you know, under a second kind of thing. And, uh, but you can't, you actually kind of need to break it up. So I had to like break it up into these, uh, like four or five. Well, they're basically, there's four eh, and then f like there's, there's sort of five steps with like four automated interludes. Let me turn this down. Can't see shit. And so she's got to like do the manual thing, hit the button do the next manual thing, hit the button, do the next manual thing, hit the button, do the next manual thing, hit the button, do the next manual thing. There is some potential that these two can be amalgamated together because I don't know if there, there needs to genuinely be a manual thing in there. 
Um, but still, and, and still, so this is going to take her like a while to do, like, she's got to like cut the sound, duplicate the track, put it through some like, um, plug in, pull it out, put it through another plug in, pitch shift it, and then move it to wherever it needs to go. Um, times like a hundred. So that's not good. But uh, so anyway, there's this thing called Soundflow. One of the things it does is it's got like an iPad surface, which is pretty rudimentary at this point, but you can basically make an iPad thing. Like I'm gonna make her like big nerfy buttons to, uh, you know, to hit the thing. Just these little like prompts, like every time like, okay, like it's like a wizard basically. And so this is the uh this is what we we've got to kind of make so like each one of these squares kind of represents like a piece of javascript and uh and then the dots are, are like the manual intervention so we got to make this thing there's a couple other things i got to make and then like she shouldn't need anything from me for a while cross fingers um so those are the things on the docket what else do we see here um, I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so I've gone and changed the, uh, what's it called? The, um, the static configuration where it used to look like, yes, oh yeah, I put that exactly where I didn't want you. This thing, so I have this, uh, this URN X Ruby thing. So this is something that I'm gonna, uh, I'm implementing over here and I've got to like go and um, implement the, uh, basically I'm re-implementing the URN thing because whoever wrote this thing did not actually read the specification. But, uh, so it's effectively, it's a URI scheme for like resolving Ruby modules and then you can like pass in uh, initialization parameters. I mean. There's not gonna be semantics attached to that other than like you can just pull them off and get them and just shove them in. Yeah, so that's basically what I'm working on there. This I'm just in the middle of. The other configuration now, I think I've shown this. So the configuration's now in RDF and it is like rapidly sort of colliding with the loop stuff that I've been working on, which is another thing entirely, but anyway, the bottom line is, Intertwingler, hopefully by the end of the week, will be hot configurable. Um, these are all of the uh, parameters and, and so on. And like, they're all reusable configurations too. So like, say these parameters are like, are like instance global. So like, every time you wanna use X, Y with their height, for example, the semantics are like already sort of figured out and they like will coerce to an integer and all that good stuff. So yeah, I don't know, by the end of the week, like hopefully this goddamn thing, like we'll have like a command line tool that you can like boot up and it'll actually go. Um, that's kind of the goal. And the only thing that's uh, gonna be messing with that potentially is uh, all of this sound flow stuff, which is like, just as, as an aside, the only way to use that, the only way to work on this stuff is like physically on her computer when she's not using it since she's in the film industry, she's working like 12 hours a day, seven days a week. So like, you know, basically when she's sleeping or the, is the only time I can actually work on that. So anyway, fun times. I already drank my coffee, so I don't have any coffee to finish. So sayonara. <laughs>